Hi, I'm Tom Ray, and this is my art podcast. I wanted to take a second to ask you a favor. If you're enjoying this episode, please remember to subscribe to it on whatever podcast app you're using, or leave a review if you can. Any little bit helps. Also, if you'd like, you could go to my website at tomraiswebsite.com and sign up for the email list, and you'll get information about each artist that I talk to, and you'll get alerts as to when different episodes are coming out. Plus, you'll also get a call out when I'm looking for artists to schedule interviews on the show. So go to TomRay'sWebsite.com and subscribe to the show there. And also, thank you so much for listening. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, I talk with an artist who's actually been on the show before. It's been a while since we spoke. When I met them, it was because they were an animator and they actually did a music video for a band that I really like called Man Man. And this time they are coming on the show to talk about a gallery opening that they just had that was based in New York and uh, they're doing paintings. They've done some paintings and the paintings are very, very unique all the way up to the frames that they created for the paintings. And we talk about that. We talk about why they made these frames when they already had the work done. They decided to add more work before the showing. So that was kind of an interesting part of the conversation. Also, we talk about how this gallery showing was really part of them going out and taking a course about how to start your gallery showing, how to get involved in gallery showings, what you should do to promote it. And it's a course they took and we talk about the methods, the different, and we talk about the different methods of how these courses work and how people can actually learn to make their own sort of courses based on just sending emails to people who sign up for your list. So we have a little bit of an insight on that because both of us have taken these online courses before. So we just kind of talk about the experiences we've had with them. So enough of this. Let's go to the interview starting right now. My name is Lindsay and I'm a uh, artist. <laughs> I, I work in a uh, painting and sculpture and um yeah, like using acrylic and oil paint. And I also have a background in animation. So like it all ties together. I d have done stop motion animation and hand-drawn animation. Yeah. On computer. And that's how I met you. <laughs> you had been on the show before. And yeah. I met you because I was contacting you for an animated video that you did. And yeah, you're painting now. So yeah, tell me, like, first of all, to, uh, for everyone at home, like, where are you located? I am located outside of New York City in a town called Weehawken, New Jersey. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's, it's very close to Manhattan. I can take the, the train, or actually the bus, into Manhattan, into 42nd Street, Penn, uh, the bus terminal. <laughs> and then I'm right in Times Square. Okay. <laughs> See, I love that. I've talked to several people from New York lately, and I love how they explain to me, like, oh, you go here, here, and here. It's like, I'm, I've am i never been to New York. I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> but... Uh, I love I love the fact that that's how whenever I meet people from New York they explain it like oh it's just right here 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 and here and I'm like okay I'll yeah, I'll try to remember that for when I go <laughs> just remember the Times Square is kind of a scare, like a, a over overwhelming place that nobody really wants to be <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's like yeah like you enter into Times Square I mean there's unless you're going to a Broadway show like that's where all the Broadway shows are and like but the, that's where all the lights are that's what you think about New York City is like being right like Times Square you know yeah where they so have that like, big that like big uh like Sony sign or whatever there all the films always have to have yeah. some sort of big moment in front of when they do that <laughs> yeah and there's all those like billboards like tons of billboards that are like you know digital animated billboards and lots of commercial stuff. I mean, sometimes they do like artists do uh, have like their art, like the um, animations, like on these screens. Oh. So it's kind of cool. Like th they were doing this thing. Yeah. It was like midnight in times square. And then like artists were like showing their, their work in times square. That was a pretty cool thing. When um, was so that? That's not all. Yeah. That was like, I think like last year or something. Yeah. Huh. I have to like look back into that. That was kind of cool. Yeah, it was like a lot more like digital artists and like film and um, yeah, it's pretty experimental. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
Well, yeah. and speaking of that, now I wanted to ask you before we get into what you've been doing, um, how would you explain your work that you've been doing? Speaking of experimental, I would say experimental is a good way to start, but like yeah. how, how would, how do you describe your work when you're telling people about it? Well, like this series, I think it's like, I think it's very autobiographical, but it's also like from uh, taken from pop culture references like film and just like, it's like kind of like this series is about like animals, like your domesticated animals, kind of like if they reign supreme in, in your life and like they were, or in the world, uh, basically like kind of like they're the wildness of the animals like my cats, for example, uh, were like really um, my like, I guess I was really inspired by them. I was drawing cats all the time. And then I was kind of like, they're so kind of like fierce and like, they're like domesticated, but they're not like, they're very, they want to go out in the wild. They want to like hunt um, <laughs> really bad. Yeah. Like they have these instincts. Um, so I'm just thinking like domestication and like during the pandemic, it's kind of like a pandemic thing too, just like being stuck inside and like so detached from nature and then having to go back on the screen, like um, working from home, working remotely where we're all like on screens all the time and like how we're distanced from our, our senses. Um, I, I just like, you know, just how wild we are kind of like as humans, we don't even notice that. Like we're just, we don't realize that like, but we like really do need to be like in person with people and like smelling and like, right. you know, it's like our senses are like overlooked, you know? Yeah. So that was kind of like me getting back into my senses. Okay. And, and like, however I need to do that. So would you say that it's like, would that be surrealism? Would that be uh, like, uh, I guess drawing the cats? I don't know. Car cartoony. Like what would be, what would be the. Yeah. Uh, type of of style that it would be described as if it were to be historically spoken of yeah i think it's like surrealism um mixed with like i don't know stop motion cartoon like i don't know <laughs> kind of mixing car cartoons and surrealism together yeah okay. somebody said like um is it like uh, there was um maybe pop surrealism or like there's yeah there's yeah, I'm still kind of trying to figure that out, but yeah, like it's a little, <laughs> I was really influenced. I was like finding, um, these surrealist painters. I was really influenced by the surrealist, um, the female surrealist that I didn't really know about other than like, you know, Frida Kahlo, like people know about her, but there was, uh, Rom uh, Remotus, Rem uh, Vera from okay. Mexico. And I mean, she moved to Mexico from France during World War II. Um, and like a lot of artists did. And then when they did that, it was like the surrealist movement in Mexico going on. Um, and so they were all like these, a lot of more female surrealists than I knew of. And actually this is, this sculpture here is like, um, a combination of like <laughs> Romita's, uh, Vera's like, this like owl lady that she made and that she painted. And then this like Mexican, um, wood sculpture, that I'm also like really interested in like this, like the, the colors and the, and the patterns mm -hmm. of like um, a lot of like sculptures that are done. I don't know. Also like in Ukrainian sculptures, they, there was a woman that did a similar style too. So it's kind of like this folk art mixed with like um, surrealist painters. Um, and then kind of like taking up space with these like sculptures instead of paintings that they did. Okay. And, but also doing both. <laughs> so while studying those, were there were there things that you were plotting out or planning out for the work you were going to do? Or was it just kind of it grew with it? Like what were some of the ways that the influences of that became part of the work? Or is it just something you picked up on and then kind of elaborated on? Like yeah. how, did that, how did that work out? I like found the art and then I found, you know, it was a combination of different references too. Like, cause there's yeah. also like the uh, white Lotus TV show I was watching. Oh, and then that, like those sculptures that are in the white Lotus. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, what are these sculptures? I mean, I, I don't want to change the subject, but like there's a, no, few, tell, like, I there's actually, a I was just going to say, what are the sculptures? I don't think yeah. I've ever seen the white Lotus. So tell me, what are these sculptures that suddenly caught oh, your eye? Yeah. So like white Lotus is like the show. That, um, it was really, it was kind of surreal. Cause it was, like all these like dynamics, like these 
there's dynamics between the characters that are very strange and like, you know, these relationships that are going on, they like kind of like hate each other, but they love each other, but you don't know. And they're like kind of backstabbing. And, but there's also like, they're in this beautiful scene, scenery Mm -hmm. um, in Italy and they're on vacation, but it's like, they can't escape their uh, horror, (laughs) horrible, like, I don't know. Like they can't escape their like horrible dynamics. Okay. And, then, and like their their pain and suffering that they don't deal with, you know. Yeah. So like, they're in this like beautiful location. There's all these like sculptures everywhere that are like these these heads, um, their head sculptures on like pedestals. And then there's a story behind that that I read. I had to like do some research on that. I figure out where are these sculptures, and they're like these. The story is like a a woman, a man cheated on the woman, her wife, and I think she cut off his head and then they put it in. In front of um the house or something I was okay. like, or, you know <laughs> so i was just thinking about like when i so it made me think about like just sculptures that we have that i see around my town like when i was walking around town um during the pandemic because it's all you could do mm-hmm. I'm like what are i'm trying to be curious about my surroundings i'm like trying to really like get influenced by like my world around me so i'm like looking at these these so, so many lion sculptures around my neighborhood um, and I'm like, what is the meaning behind that? I was like looking into that and like, it's like this protective thing. People like want to protect their houses. So they put uh, lions in front of it. And, and also like in Chinese, like they also, Chinese people, culture has lions as well, that, but there are these different like style of lion. Um, so there's always just like, I don't know, this weird, you know, symbolic thing going on that you don't really think about. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was thinking about things that are going like, what do we need protection from? Like, do we need, what do we kind of like this thing where like everybody's on the internet now, you know, and, and especially during the pandemic, my husband got really into, um, yeah, on Twitter and like talking to all these people on Twitter, Twitter trolls <laughs> and, um, people were like attacking him on Twitter. So I was like, we need protection from the internet, like Twitter trolls and <laughs> trolls. I was like, made this painting was like, about that like um like using kind of like the cat the tiger because mm-hmm. he's like the year of the tiger is he is the year of the tiger in chinese astrology so like i i was like putting the pieces you know making it kind of like a statue that's like he's on the computer he's he's a cyber security cat so he's protecting <laughs> the internet he's protecting the the party okay <laughs> it's kind of like trying to make it more like fun so like thinking about the party and like i don't know it is kind of like about covid too just like can't party anymore you can't go out dancing you have to stay at home and um you know not be around people so it's like protecting the party from covid bullies i don't know online trolls like (laughs) where can you party these days (laughs) i like the idea too that it's just like uh i'm stuck at home so i'm gonna create a virtual fight club you know (laughs) basically yeah (laughs) <laughs> I, w- I want you to attack me with the meanest thing you can yeah. say <laughs> is basically what That's he said. true. I know. It's like we all just like, you know, human nature. We all just want to like attack each other. <laughs> so now the show that you just had recently, um, tell me, tell me about it. It, it. it was from August to September and you did the show here. So tell me a little bit about the showing that you had. Yeah, it was like... Um, it was pretty awesome. <laughs> I was at Solus Studio, um, which is in New York. Shout out to Solus Studio. They're like a, a group. They're like a, a bunch of artists that like it's run by um, Liam, who, um, you know, we can all be like members of this art community. And then they're hosting individual shows uh, for like features for for artists to have a solo show. Mm-hmm. So I pitched my idea and this was like uh in march of last year so i think i had like six months to put it together and um i was like oh yeah i'm ready for it sure (laughs) but then there was all these things i wanted to try and do so i like i wanted to make frames and i made these like i wanted to experiment with making frames that were more like sculptural frames and kind of tied into the painting yeah because i used to do stuff like that a long time ago with uh spray foam and um so i wanted to take that a step further and try new things and make it like this like kind of I don't know and create an environment where it felt like I I just get I don't I didn't want to do like normal frames I just wanted 
to be like this immersive experience. As much so as the I frames could. were not originally part um, of what you had yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah, I had, I don't think I, I think I maybe had like one frame or something, but yeah, I, I made all the frames during that time, mostly. Yeah. So tell me, tell me about those frames. They're very interesting. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. They were like, um, made out of like wood and then, um, they are glued together. You know, like I actually had a friend that told me a little bit about how to like, you know, make, cause the paintings are wood. So then you put some, you put wood behind it. Um, that makes it like protrude out of the wall. And then from a, from around that frame that's behind the wood panel, you can like add a frame around it. Mm-hmm. So I had to like, you know, create the frame around it. And then from that, you can add pieces that make it bigger, you know, like bigger frame. And then you can like, I had to try different things. Like with this one, it was like um, on the top, uh, I had to make the frame like, you know, wider. It could have been like, this is like a piece of wood here. It's like, and then there's like an added piece of wood that comes out. So it makes it a wider frame. Yeah. And then you have more um, to work with. And then, um, yeah, using the spray foam and then the um, paint on that to uh, kind of tie it together to the front, to the picture. But yeah, this one was like the, probably the most experimental one that I kind of want to do more things like that. It's almost uh, like you built another sort of sculpture on top of the frame. Like it's actually a very elaborate top of the frame and it's got sections Mm -hmm. and things like that. And you also would paint on that frame as well. Well, first of all, because spray foam in its own natural form is not appealing. (laughs) You know, so of course you have to paint Mm -hmm. the spray foam. (laughs) No. (laughs) But but yeah, explain how like how basically the problem most artists have is it's like, when is the painting done? And you're like, okay, the painting's done. Wait. I'm going to make a frame and now that's going to become part of the project. And when is that going to be done? <laughs> yeah, I know. And that was like a whole other <laughs> stress. It was fun though. It was stressful because you're like, yeah, how, when is this going to be done? How, how is this going to be done? Um, when do you know it's done? <laughs> All that stuff. But yeah. It is like a whole other additional art project. <laughs> And were you specifically doing so, them to match with the artwork? Because I know some of them have even uh, different colored stencils spray painted onto the frames. Yeah. And see, I would kind of like figure out what worked with with each project, with each artwork. So like as I went, and I didn't have an absolute idea as going into it exactly how that would be. But some mm-hmm. of it, it's like amazing how it kind of serendipitously comes together because one of the frames I had was like a uh, viney kind of, it ended up being like a viney kind of look with the spray foam and the, and the picture itself was about, you know, walk through the woods and it was very, you know, natural looking kind of trees and in the woods. So like the, the frame by accident, you know, not intentionally, but it worked well, well, but the spray foam a little bit got clogged in there and I would like have to, clean the the um the nozzle of the spray foam with a special oh. like toxic chemical <laughs> yeah you know so like um so then i would like spray it on there and it came out thinner so it ended up looking like a vine mm-hmm. and i ended up sh- sh- doing like the squiggly look and then spray painting it on there it was very like experimental i didn't know exactly how it was going to turn out um and then it's like now i feel like i want to like add more to it <laughs> it's like not really done even though i did show it already it was like, yeah. Yeah. Some of the things I'm going back into. And so over <laughs> like the period been, of the month, but... how, how was the show? I mean, basically tell me about the show. What, anything interesting happened during it or, you know, what so it was. Well, yeah, it was like, cool. It was, um, so it was only a week long, oh, <laughs> but I, yeah, see, I, there you show. go. I, I was, but it was, it's the fact that it said it was August to September and I was just like, Oh, wow. It was a month. It, okay. You're right. It was probably like the last week of August. Oh, sorry. <laughs> clear. That's okay. I, yeah, I need to read like, a calendar last, better. No, or, no, it's okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to know all the details. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> um, no, it was like, it was a week long. And so I just, I really had to get, it was like a lot of learning how to market it, which I learned. I took a class, a little 
you know, online class um, oh. uh, with Gita and Ka- Katarina Pavova, Pavova okay. um, which is a really good class. It's called like your own art show. Okay. So they helped, they taught like the step-by-step process of like getting your own show, doing it yourself. And um, even though I had, you know, help from the gallery, it's like a, you know, gallery studio space. They really helped. They helped like hang the show and, you know, Ward and Brandon, they were there and they helped, you know, helped, uh, you know, sell stuff when we were there. And it was like, kind of like being in a gallery show, but it was also like up to me to promote the show a lot. And, um, Mm -hmm. I made cards. I, um, I, you know, I got my friend, my friend, Amber Johnston is a photographer came, uh, over and I hired her to take photos of me (laughs) with the artwork. So it felt a little vain, but it was like, it's kind of funny. It was kind of fun. It was like, you know, taking pictures in the studio as like an artist trying to take myself seriously as an artist. Right. (laughs) But also goofy. Like they're very like funny shots. Um, so it's kind of like an art, a uh, performance art piece in, unto itself, that aspect of it. And, uh, we have worked together in the past doing stuff like that, like kind of like perform, you know, photography projects, um, kind of goofy. And, uh, so then, yeah, it's just like promoting the show online, talking to people, collecting emails for everybody I met, like through like the, you know, trying to see who's interested in art that people that I just meet around town. I'm like, Oh, I'm having an art show. So I'm just mm-hmm. promoting it all the time and then collecting email addresses and then sending them out. And then, uh, using party full was kind of cool. It was like a, you can RSVP on there and it's yeah, unlike, I've never you know, seen you that one before. Facebook. I, I, I saw yeah, that you were cool. using that. I, I was unfamiliar with that one. Yeah. And I was unfamiliar with it too. Like Sola studios, they, they knew about it. And, you know, Brandon from, Solo Studios, he put it out up, and then I was like just promoting that, and but it's pretty, it was pretty good because you could see everybody's RSVPs, mm-hmm. and um, and then you can like easily just send it out to people. You don't have to be like on Facebook or not tied to. And Eventbrite was they didn't want to go through Eventbrite because it's like a, usually I think it's public, and then lots of like random people would just come for the free cheese and wine. So they right. have that problem with this gallery sometimes. I've done that. Yeah. People just, they don't even look at the art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. Me too. I used to do that all the time. Yeah. yeah. But, no, it, yeah, that is can, funny. Like, I really did do it when I was younger. You're right. Like, yeah. Really weird. <laughs> yeah. I used to do that. Yeah. Uh, um, I know, but which, but, but if you like art, then it's okay. I mean, like, I feel like you would go and you like at least look at the art a little bit, maybe. Uh-huh. <laughs> No, it, it was a it was but a thing I discovered. Are just so lo- totally it, weird. It was a thing I discovered when uh, my band used to play out a lot, and we'd go to college towns, and basically I'd go go to the we'll go to the university, find out where the because it would be the weekends. We'd go find out where the art buildings are, and we would just walk in, and if it was open, it's like okay, there's a gallery around here somewhere, and there's going to be alcohol and food, <laughs> and we would just all plow into this room. <laughs> So, but this, yeah, this was a while ago. It's not something I currently do, but, but you know, but <laughs> it was like a lot of like, and I've been to shows where this has happened recently and it's a lot of old men. They're doing it. Oh, and they're just like, what is this? What's the deal? Yeah. They're like really old guys. And then they're just like, they don't understand Tinder. So this is their way to live with their mom. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of sketchy. You're like, uh, right? <laughs> I don't want to get sucked into this conversation. <laughs> or maybe they were always just there, but we just are more aware of things like that now. Whereas when we're younger, you just ignore those people, you know. <laughs> I know, and then somehow they like make you get into a conversation with them, and it's like I don't get out of this. I, just, I don't know. Now there, tell me, this, there, I don't know if I want to. No. Down the negative. <laughs> right. Tell me yeah. more about the uh, the this online uh, uh, course that you took. So I'm I'm interested in what it taught you and what you learned from it. That like, what are some of the things that you, you were like, oh, that's so obvious, or like, I had no idea, or that's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Like those sort of moments that you had taking that course. Well, one of one of the things was something that I didn't really get a chance to do too much, but like how to get a write up, like an, a write up, yeah. in any kind of on yeah like it's like first you want somebody to promote like a newspaper or something to, sh- to promote that there's a show mm-hmm. and then 
somehow I think it's if you have a longer show, it's easier to do this, but like if you have like a month long show, you gotta get somebody to, to write about the show. And then they they said, you know, they write about it in a like an artist you know, like like hyperallergenic or um one of those, you know, like any any kind of artist online magazine or whatever. There's yeah. like a bunch of you know, local things or whatever, but it, it is like you, you want to get people to talk about it. And that really helps, I guess the next show that you want to do, it's like a pub getting published or something. Right. That's something I didn't really know. And I still kind of don't know how to do it, but I, I well, and it's not that simple artists. either. Yeah. So you're supposed to follow. Yeah. It's not that simple. Cause you have to build a relationship with the, with a writer, like on Instagram or something like start following writers. And then you like, comment on what they post and write about you kind of have to like build a uh, rapport with them and then they um and then when you have a show you like reach out and tell them that you have a show (laughs) but yeah that's something for like next time (laughs) right that's something you have to like chip away at and well and it's because i mean i understand why it's hard to do because the people that write this like otherwise everybody would be like i decided i'm going to start doing artwork. Now I'm going to contact this magazine and go, Hey, I'm going to start doing artwork, publish about my stuff, you know? And they're like, well, what do you do? And it's like, well, I'm working on, you know, I get that. Not everybody's like me where all you have to do is go, Hey, I'd like to talk about my artwork. And I go, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm, I want yeah, to discover exactly. people who are starting I out. Like I want to like know you. about people in the beginning of what they're doing. Like, I don't, I, I don't have that gateway when I do my stuff, but yeah, it, it makes sense though for a publication that yeah. actually has like money they have to make and things. So I get that. Okay. So there was that. And, uh, uh, what, what other things, like, how did you go about finding the people that you did? Like you were in create or you have a posting on create. Yeah. I believe? yeah. And that was like, that was really great because so Katarina is, she runs create magazine. Mm-hmm. So she's, she's got her hands in different things. She has art Queens. Um, so I'm part of the art Queens. Um, and what's that? She does like different projects. So it's like, it's like a Facebook page for artists. And, but they, she also does like live talks with different artists. She brings in and talks about bu- the business of art. mostly. Oh. Um, and she also has, she, yeah. So like I've, I've been with that, with them for like a, f- a couple of years since the pandemic, she like started during the pandemic. So it was like this online, like support group <laughs> for like artists. Okay. Um, and yeah, so it's, yeah, that, so she, then she did like a, she just like a coach too. She's like an artist coach. And then I took her a, cl- a course with her that was like how to kind of get back for me, it was like how to get back into art and taking it seriously and then, and creating a series or whatever you want to do mm-hmm. with that. Um, whether she, she promotes also talks about like starting your own like online workshops and, you know, teach, like if you want to go in the teaching direction or you, you know, offering like online, you know, workshops or coaching. The toughest thing about that yeah. is um, feeling like you can like, you know, it, that's, that's, I've, I've heard people yeah. say that and, and saying like, oh, you can do workshops and help people. And I get, there are, there are people that you could help doing that stuff. And I'm speaking me, I'm speaking from like, I've thought of that myself as well, but I'm like, I'm just some dumb idiot. Who's going to want to like do that learning for me. You know, it, 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 that's my that's my yeah. out, out loud thoughts right now that I just said. It's like, who the hell would want to listen to me? And that's the hardest part. Like, that's the most difficult thing, you know? And, and I'm not saying that would be a problem you have or anybody else would have, but when I've heard... I do have that problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, I, I can't be alone in thinking that. Like, they go, oh, you yeah. create a workshop. And it's like, well, yeah, of course you can. You're brilliant, you know, the person telling you this. I'm I'm just some schlub going, okay. You know, it's... it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm I'm going through my own like think, little no, think, thought process here. No, but I think there. I mean, what she says is like there's something that we have knowledge. Everybody has knowledge that somebody else doesn't have. That yeah. there's always going to be somebody that you can teach for sure. I mean, but yeah, they have to have the money or whatever. But, right. But I I mean, everybody has something that they can teach. But it's just about I guess it's putting it yourself out there in that way, and then. 
and figuring out what it is that people actually want to learn from you too. Cause like right. you, you have so many skills. We know a lot about a lot of things, but then what is it that people actually want to know mm-hmm. that we could offer them? And then, and then creating that course, which takes so much time. Right. But I guess it it could be worth it, but yeah, it is, it is like a lot of, it would be a lot of work to do. Well, and like, I always think about, oh, yeah, I could teach something, but I don't yeah. know what it is that people would want to learn. Well, one method that I know is something where it's like you have the people create it for you. So what you do is you create the email list by setting a page going like, hey, I do this stuff and I'll send you an email about what I do. And so as the list grows, you just keep sending out information of like stuff you do and then things that people respond mm-hmm. to. Like you ask a question each time, like, oh, what do you think of this? And if people respond, then you go, oh, they someone actually respond like you can keep asking the question like i did this thing what do you think of that what would you want to know more about it no response okay i'm not going to do that one again because mm-hmm. clearly nobody's interested then you do another thing and go what did you think of this would you like to know more or what questions do you have about it and if somebody has a question then you do one about that question and make that public and then see if and then you just keep asking the questions over and over again And what they do is the people are telling you what they want to learn. It's a long haul. It's not a thing that happens overnight. But as as you're doing it, you build your list and you keep sending the stuff out to people. But then you ask the questions and then make more about that. And that's that's how you can build it up and learn what people want to learn. Whereas you could sit down and spend all this time going, okay, I'm going to tell people this, this, and this. And everybody could be like, yeah, we know that. Or no, I don't want to learn about that. I want to learn about yeah. something else, you know. And then you've just wasted all this time making a course. That's a thought process I have, and I kind of try to do that. But at the same time, I'm like, eh, but I'm already putting stuff out there. I don't know. So that's just that's one method. That's called like a seed yeah. launch method or something like that. Um, whereas you basically just create an email list by putting out a thing that says, "I'm going to be talking about this on my email list." And then you just wait to see what the response, you have to keep asking questions going, what do you think of this? What would you like to know more about this? And when people respond, then that's when you go, okay, I'll write more about that. Whereas most of the time, and from my experience, nobody responds to the question or what they, <laughs> what more they'd want to know. So that's why I'm saying it's also the long <laughs> haul. So it seems, it makes sense where it's like, oh, that makes great yeah. sense. But it's like, it also is like months of, trying to figure out what works but that's also a month worth of you not making a course or a workshop that people don't want to go to because you know like oh nobody responded to that and you didn't put all this work and effort into it all you really did was go type in a thing and go i do this this way would you like to know more which is a bare bones way of putting it pretty much so and then if nobody does then it's like oh all i did was waste the time to write an email so Anyway, I've taken a lot of those courses too. And that's, that's what I've yeah. learned from them. I know. I know. I know. It's like, yeah, that'd be really easy to do, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sounds good. Ever going to do it. No, I know. It's like, and then it's like, um, <laughs> like, will you like, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. It, well, it's, yeah, it's the, will you follow through with it? And it's also the, once you start doing it, it's like, yeah. Do I have more? And this again goes into my, uh, you know, mm-hmm. my, my, uh, self doubt going like, can I elaborate more on this? Do I have more to say about it? What do I know? And you know, there's, there's always that crushing yeah. self doubt. So that's always a fun part too. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, that's a lot. That's, that's actually a big one for me. This entire art show process was yeah. like, self-doubt after self-doubt after oh my god oh my god what am i doing why am i doing this who am i mm-hmm. like <laughs> right am i an artist actually or why am i saying i'm an artist yeah it's like all this constant <laughs> like ah, and then i'm like working full time too of right. doing ux design so i'm like I'm, like i'm trying to like squeeze this in on the side and but i can't really like, it's very time consuming um so you better believe in yourself and then you know, and then I'm like, you know, it's it's hard to say like, my dream, you know, I'm going to be an artist, and you know, people are like, well, do you really want to be an artist, or do you really want to? Uh, is your goal to to be in galleries and be, you know, I 
I don't know, selling things for a million dollars. Sure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I would love to sell things for a million dollars, but that might never happen. And it could, you know, but then there's some people that just believe that it's going to happen for them or they really want that. Like that's the only thing that, you know, they can do or something. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I, I, I don't know. It just seems like a crazy idea, but I guess it's possible. <laughs> I love it. You just did an art show and you're like, this seems silly. Why, why nobody does this. <laughs> you just did it. <laughs> I know. And I'm like, what is life? I don't know. <laughs> is this real life? I sold um, stuff too. I'm like, is this yeah. real life? Is, am, I, am I dreaming? <laughs> well, and now that you've done this show, like, uh, you know, first of all, what do you, what are you going to do next? Do you do more with the work that you have? Are you working up to another show? Like what happens after the show is over? I know. It's a good question. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. It's like, um, and also, yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think I would like to learn from like what people liked and what they didn't like, you know, yeah, that's a good idea tell me what they didn't like, but what they responded to, what people responded to. And a lot of people have responded to like this painting back here. And then this one over on the side here and, um, about the cat. So this is my, my cat jumping off the roof. I was not aware that those were your cats in uh, the paintings. Lantern fly. <laughs> well, not all of the, yeah, this one is my cat, Yeah. but this one's not really my cat. This okay. Is not, this is like a tiger, but this one is like very much based off my cat. Cause he did actually jump off the roof. Um, and, and had like a painful experience where he almost died. Um, okay. but like, you know, he's okay now. Good. Um, but like, so we have these spotted lantern flies. <laughs> I don't know. Do you have spotted lantern flies? I don't know what those live? are. So probably not. I mean, we have fireflies. Well, these are like this, um, they're not like, they're from China. Apparently they came here and they're, um, they de apparently destroy, uh, vegetables and, and fruit trees. Um, I'm trying to think of like, they're not native to this, you know, obviously to New York. And then this plant here draws them to it, um, draws the lantern flies to it. And that's also not native to this area, to okay. weed, a weed tree that we have in our backyard. Anyway, um, a lot of people responded to this painting because they feel the pain of these uh, lantern flies that destroy people's produce. Hmm. Um, they suck out like the nutrients or like there's a um, something that they do that they I have to look, the scientific thing. I have to look into it a little bit more, but like they, apparently they suck out the calcium. I think it is. Okay. So they're yeah really bad. But um, and we're all killing them. It's like this whole thing that's going on. Everybody has to kill them if you see them. Hmm. Not, so there's all these dead lantern flies, and they look really cool. They're like spotted <laughs> white spots on red. <laughs> they look really pretty. That was a very um, goth thing you, you but... just said. You have to kill them all, but they look really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean that's what we're going. That's what we're dealing with over here. Yeah, on the East Coast. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, anyway. A lot of people really responded to that painting. So it made me think that I should make more of those kind of things, like based on what people are like really going through yeah, and kind of something that unites us together, but also your own interpretation of it. Um, I think that kind of thing resonates with people. And, and it's, it's the like same basic concept thing. of what we were just talking about with the workshops. I mean, it's really just what yeah. did people respond to and what didn't they respond to? But then it also goes to two, um, you still have those paintings, but you said you sold paintings. So what are the ones that sold? Like, I mean, they responded to that too, obviously, so, you know? So it's I the, made it, I actually made prints. Oh, good. Time. Nice. Yeah, so. That's actually smart. I like that. <laughs> I didn't even think yeah, of that. That's like, funny. So I, this one sold, I think I sold probably like the most of this one. So like seven prints of this one. Okay. Yeah, and then the um huh. another one that sold. I don't have it here anymore. The originals sold too. So, but I do have the the, the photo of it. That's another thing that I didn't think about is taking photos of all the art, like really good photos. Mm -hmm. That's like another additional thing to think about. Yeah, 
time-consuming thing because you have to finish the painting before you take the photo. So you do need a lot of time. I think time is when people say, have the paintings done before you say you're going to have an art show. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> then you can really focus on. Or don't start making frames <laughs> for them after you get the art <laughs> show. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then you can really focus on like making really good photos and yeah. And then prints. And Well, with the prints, are you uh, planning to sell those online or do you sell those online? I am planning on it. I was, so I can sell them through, like, so Solus Studio, they are a print studio. Oh, okay. Um, so that was cool to, like, they printed them right there, and that was very easy. I might continue going through them, or I might post it on, I'm trying to figure out, actually, a good place to, like, sell the prints from. I heard Saatchi has, a, you know, print, you know, printing abilities. And I, I'm just not sure, like, what the quality is. I want to find good quality Prince. Yeah. I know a lot of people when I've talked to uh, about so prints that they have, they like to do them in-house and then just sell the physical ones themselves. Uh, it seems to be the thing that people prefer. Yeah. But uh, I mean, like that's really just someone's printer. opinion. Yeah. You know, it's, th there's also print on demand, but of yeah. course you don't get to see those as they go out and you don't know who's printing them. Yeah. But. That's the freaky part. <laughs> but I, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so what are some things that you uh, have coming up in the future or things that you are planning to do in the future that you'd like to tell people about? Submitting to a bunch of different art shows. Okay. I haven't really done before because I have, now have a body of work. So I can submit to more art shows. And um, I also like am involved in the animation world a little bit here. Yeah, I was going to ask too, about so that if you had to... any animation things coming. I mean, I, I've been hanging out with some animators lately and kind of talked about making some collaborative animations. So maybe, hopefully that'll happen. I don't want to curse it. Right, yeah. <laughs> but I do want to, yeah, do want to work on some animations. I saw an amazing animation last night that I'll, I'll promote to My Love Affair with Marriage. Oh. Um, it's a really good feature-length film, hmm. independent animation that I saw last night. It's very, it's an epic film. Um, if you can see it, I definitely recommend that by Signe uh, Bauman. Bauman, that's how you say her name. Um, she's like a she. <laughs> she's a really, uh, like like independent animator from New York that's very like well known. I've seen her around a lot of things, and she's like Ukrainian. She's Lithuanian, and um, she her story is like. You know, a lot to do with like Soviet Union, but also being a female and um, having various relationships, but then like figuring out who, what her, what she needs. But then also it's like a scientific thing of like a hormones, what's going on in your brain and what you are in a relationship and at first and then like, yeah, like the chemicals that are going on. It was really cool. It was like scientific hmm. and like emotional and like uh, cultural. So very, yeah. And, okay. and very like feminist. Yeah. All right. So, but yeah, I would love to make a feature length film one day. It's kind of, it gave me, it gave me inspiration for that. Like just like thinking about like, autobiographical art that um, it's, it's so amazing when you can like show something in a theater and it just all, everything, you know, sound, visual, it's just so impactful. Yeah. You know, reminded me of all that, you know. Nice. All right. And then, ooh, oh. sirens are going off. Nice. <laughs> New York. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if people want yeah. to do, uh, if people wanted to check out more of your work, where could they do that? Oh, uh, Instagram. Uh, Lindsay Art Senses, L I N D Z Art Senses. All right. And I want to thank you once again for coming back and yeah. talking with me and tell me what you've been up to. It's been great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Tom.